Hey everybody, I'm just coming to you real quick um, to give you a quick update that we got from the APA, the American Poultry Association, um, and the American Bantam Association uh, Joint Task Force Representative. Um, excuse me, let me rephrase that. We got an update from the APA um, in an email. And it's a message from Emily Shoup, Penn State Extension Exe Educator and APA ABA Joint Task Force. Um, so first off, I want to say before I start into this, well, no, let me go ahead and start into this. It was a reading from, or I'm going to go ahead and read the email to you. It says, in sitting in USDA, APHIS, and PA Poultry calls this week, I felt it necessary to provide a snapshot of the current outbreak and more resources of high path avian influenza. Highly pathogenic avian influenza has been detected on 34 premises in 15 U.S. states, 21 of, 21 of which are commercial operations. Hold on, I gotta turn this so I can make it bigger. There we go. Um, 13 of which are small black, small backyard flocks or zoos. Of those 13 small and backyard flocks, only three indicate a flock size of over 100. Small flock numbers depopulated as of 3.30 p.m. on March 15th of 2022, that was yesterday, are 1,066 birds. The commercial industry has depopulated 7.65 million birds in the same time frame. We can safely say the overwhelming majority of cases have been found in the commercial industry. On the USDA, USDA APHIS call this morning, we were told that lateral transmission of the virus, meaning flock to flock, is not causing the 15 state outbreak. It is more likely that contact via a vector meaning contact with wild birds, is bringing it in. As we all know, it's hard to keep waterfowl away from our exhibition waterfowl. It's hard to keep our outdoor flocks safe from water birds in general, or from wild birds in general, excuse me. Please use caution around areas where wild waterfowl congregate, such as golf courses, parks, reservoirs, lakes, etc., Please deter wild birds from commingling with your flocks. Please separate your landfowl and waterfowl. Failure to do so increases your risk significantly for transmission of the virus and prolongs the heightened period of biosecurity and exhibition prohibition. There we go. USDA APHIS believes the virus could take 18 months to clear itself from the wild bird population. If we all do our part, we can reduce the number of commercial and exhibition flocks impacted and show shutdown. Um, and then please visit the www.extensionpsu.edu avian influenza for resources pertaining to biosecurity in your flock. Um, and stay up to date with the outbreak information from USDA APHIS at, and it gives the website, which I have provided all those information, or all those links, um, or at least the USDA APHIS link on the National Sebastopol website. Um, now, I know yesterday I did a um, live video where my videos, or my birds were outside. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that I have no way to keep, like, the wild Tweety birds, um, you know, the sparrows and the starlings and et cetera like that, um, out of my runs. Um, in reality, you're really not going to be able to do proper biosecurity outdoors without basically treating it, as I like to think of it, almost like a hazmat situation where you are, you know, standing inside of a box. You have this box, that's your dirty area. Then you change your clothes, you change your shoes, you disinfect, etc., like that, before you even walk into that box. Or, you know, walk into your 
coop, the building, whatever you want to call it. Then you do the same thing walking back out. Um, where that little box is your clean area and then your dirty area. Um, you know, disinfecting in and out. Even going from like building to building and not changing shoes can possibly. This isn't like to panic. This isn't to panic. This is just to be more cautious. Like uh, yesterday, I was at physical therapy, and there they have some cranes. And then yesterday, there were a couple of Canadian geese out there. Um, before I got out of my car, or well, I stopped and I got um, bleach wipes at the store. And before I walked out, got out of my car and got home. I bleach wiped the very best that I could the bottom of my shoes. Um, just to try to protect. And, and when I was walking out of the building, before I got into my car, I made sure that I was watching where I stepped. Um, you know, how on concrete you can see like little white splatters, etc. like that. I avoided all of that the very best that I could. That was the least that I expected to see in the middle of a busy high traffic area um so even things like that um again this is not to cause panic this is literally just information to have in your back pocket um you know if you've got pans do what you can in your power to allow the wild migration to come into your ponds if you have um, bird feeders and such pull them up mm -mm, stop they'll find somewhere else to go um, if you're taking your feed bins that's not being used you know like the leftover remnants dustings etc like that don't just toss them outside your coop put them in a bag put them in your garbage can put them in whatever your way of garbage is to get rid of them. That way you're doing everything in your power to lessen the chance of those visitors. Um, the more we work together and the more that we all do, hopefully the less that we will lose through this. Um, so again, just be aware of your surroundings. Um, watch it when you're out and about as to where you're going, what you're stepping in. Um, do like I did. I now have bleach wipes in my car. Um, I might actually take and change that up here and do a spray bottle with bleach wipes. But in the same token, I don't really want to bleach my whole entire shoe. Um, my shoes are blue. In my luck, I'd probably, you know, get my pants and everything else like that uh, so any questions reach out ask learn educate do the very best you can do um, have a great day I gotta head out to a doctor's appointment bye guys